What's up guys, my name is Brandon. Today I'll be showing you more than 10 iPhone tricks that you probably didn't know existed in iOS 12. Now a couple of these aren't even new in iOS 12, but I think these are some of the most underrated features that not everybody uses or not everybody even knows about. All right, so let's not waste any time at all. Let's go ahead and get into these. So the first one is that you can actually use your Memoji or any Animoji as a sticker and drag it and place it on top of text messages. Now, of course you do need to be texting somebody that has iMessage as well. And you can see here's what it looks like on on the recipient's phone after you add the stickers. So if I send a text message saying, are you happy or sad, instead of just a conventional just text, you know, just saying, hey, I'm happy, you can maybe send an, an emoji or a Memoji. So you can see my Memoji is down there right now talking and everything, but if I go and smile real quick and tap and drag on it, and put it over top of the text bubble right there until it turns dark gray and let go. You can see I put a smiley face over top of that text and on the recipient's phone, you can see it comes across right there. And you can see it shows that I am happy. Of course, it does cover up a little bit of the text, but it's still pretty cool that you can reply with these little Animoji and Memoji stickers. Of course, if you don't want to use Memoji, you can swipe over and do the Animojis as well the exact same way. Just tap and hold and drag it onto the text bubble. You can see you can add multiples there as well. The only thing I wish you could do here is record a video and then actually place it as a sticker. But of course, if you play it, you do have to upload it and it sends it as its own standalone emoji, of course, with audio and you can see the mouth moving and all that. So that's not really a useful feature, but it is a pretty fun feature to use here in iOS 12. Of course, if you do have an emoji and Memoji enabled on your phone. The next tip is a way to actually hide photos. So as you guys know, inside of the default photos application, you can hide photos by going to the share sheet and then going over here to press hide and then you press hide photo. But the only problem is it's not actually fully hidden. If you go all the way down past your albums into other albums, there is actually an album called hidden. And when you click on this, it'll actually show all of your hidden photos. So it's not really hidden for anybody that knows anything about iPhones. But the good news is there's a way to actually hide photos without putting them inside of a hidden folder inside of photos. And the way I do this is by actually adding the photos to files. So if we take this photo right here and we go all the way over to save to files, and then we can put it inside of a folder inside of our iCloud drive. And if you really wanted to hide it well, you could put it in a folder inside of a folder. So for instance, we can go to iCloud drive. If we want to save it to documents folder, and then inside of the documents folder, we have another folder called Zoom. So we can save the photo inside of that folder. So it's inside of two folders, but also inside of iCloud Drive. We click add, it goes straight there. And if we go to our files application and go to iCloud Drive, documents, zoom, you'll have the photo right there. And I think this is just a much better way to actually hide photos and videos because not a lot of people really think about the files application, especially people that don't know a ton about iPhones, like obviously me, you know, or somebody that's really, really into iOS and knows pretty much the ins and outs of it is going to eventually look inside of the files application. But most people will not look inside of the files application. They definitely will not go into multiple folders inside of the files application. So in my opinion, this is the best way to hide photos and videos on the iPhone. I should actually clarify that I think it's the best way to hide photos and videos without another application. Now the next tip applies to both iOS 12.1 and to newer devices like the iPhone XS, the XS Max, and the iPhone XR. And this trick is that you can actually change the depth of field before taking a photo. So of course you guys know with the new iPhone's portrait photos, you can now change the depth of field after taking the photo. But in iOS 12.1, you get a little F stop button up in the top right. And if you tap on that, you can see you can adjust the depth of field before you actually take the photo. So this is very cool and you can of course take it and then go back in and edit it afterwards as well if you want to, but it is pretty cool that you can change it beforehand as well. The next trick is that you can actually share links to photos and have them expire at a certain time when you share them. So for instance, I have a screenshot right here. If I go to the share button in the bottom left, scroll all the way down on the bottom to copy iCloud link, it will prepare a link right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and send this as a text message. And if I send this as a text message and open it up on the other device, you can see that I have the image right there. And if you want this to expire so they can no longer view the link, if you press these three dots up here on the top right and click on stop sharing, you can see it says access to these shared photos will be removed from iCloud immediately, stop sharing. So that is a pretty cool trick you can use there in iOS 12 to share links and have them expire. The next little trick is more of a tip, but if we go into our settings and go to battery, now of course this 
shows the big graph. It shows the last 24 hours and then last 10 days. Down here, it shows the battery usage by app. YouTube, 34%, Twitter, 9%, all of that. But what a lot of people don't know is that you can actually break this down even further. So if you go to the graph and click on a little part where you see, like if you see a little dip where your battery starts dropping, you can actually click on that and see what was using the most battery at that specific time. And down here, it shows that exact time as well. So it shows from 7 to 8 a.m. I was using ESPN Fantasy the most, and that's what caused that little dip in battery. And if you want a more precise click, you can click on this little chart down here and it gives you, you know, a little bit more precise of a click. So you don't have to, you know, guess when you're doing it on this big graph. So this is very useful because you can find certain dips and drops in your graph and see, you know, what was the cause for that drop. And of course, this will work for the last 10 days as well. You could see, break it down by day and everything like that. It shows Tuesday, you have Monday, but I found it to be the most useful with the last 24 hours because you could break it down by the hour. And if we go back to settings and go to screen time, you can actually get more specific with this as well. So if you tap and hold on these, you can see you get a little bit more of specific details for each bar graph there, each bar on that bar graph. And if you go into one of these, you could see a little bit more as well. So these are just some details that may, you may not have known about. And you also have limits down here if you want to add a limit so that maybe a kid or maybe you didn't want to spend so much time in an application, you can add a limit. I see a lot of people just go in here, read the graph and leave, but there's just a lot more to both the screen time and the battery settings inside of settings. There's just a lot of cool stuff you can do inside of screen time besides actually seeing, you know, where you've been spending most of your time. The next trick is that you can actually ask Siri what your password is for a certain website. What's my password for adobe.com? So you will see it scans my face and actually shows me my password right there. So it's really cool because it actually shows your passcode in plain text. So it's showing my passcode right there. Obviously I am blurring it out for this video, but you could also have the option here to change the password on website with one click. And then it shows you the specifics of the website right there. You could also remove this from passwords if you want to. So of course you can get to this through settings as well, but it's a lot quicker and easier and it opens up right away if you ask through Siri. And of course you saw that it did have to scan my face or if you have a touch ID device, you will have to put in your thumbprint to actually show you the passcode. So that is some really cool stuff right there. Now the next one is more of a tip and it's one that I mentioned in pretty much every single video where I talk about tips and tricks no matter if it's on a new phone, if it's on iOS, whatever. It's that you can actually scan and sign documents within the default notes application. And the reason I keep mentioning this in every video is because so many people still do not use this. They either download another application or they literally try to find a place to scan a document like a UPS store or something like that. And I'm just so confused because it's built right into iOS. So if you go into notes, click on the plus, scan documents, take a picture of the document, say that was the picture of the document, keep scan, save, and say this is our scan document. If we click on it, click the share button up in the top right, go down in the bottom to markup, click the plus right here. You actually have a spot for signature. And you can see I already have my signature in there, but you can add one if you want right there. Take the signature, you put it wherever it needs to be to sign on the lines in your document. Once you've added the signature as many times as you need, click on done, click on share once again, and then you can create PDF. Then click the share button in the bottom left, save to files, and then you could save it to your iCloud drive or just to your phone or whatever. And you have a signed document in PDF format on your phone, quick and easy, straight from your phone. You don't have to go to the UPS store. You don't have to download any kind of other application. It's built right in and it works great. Now, the next little trick is inside of Control Center. So if we go to Control Center, customize controls, there's one down here called hearing. And this is actually a feature called live listen. So you can see it's down here. If we go and tap on that, and I'm gonna pull my AirPods out over here, take them out of the case. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in my ears. And you can see now live listen changed to off. If we go and tap on it to turn it on, it's very distracting if I do it on video, but basically what it allows you to do is act as a hearing aid, or you can spy on people. It basically just enhances the sound like it's a hearing aid. So if somebody's saying something from far away and you can't really hear them, if you put your AirPods in and turn on this feature live listen, you'll be able to hear them a lot clearer. So this is extremely useful, especially for older people who have hearing aids. This could actually be an alternative to hearing aids. Now I can't confirm if it's actually as good as hearing aids. I doubt it really is, but it's still a really cool step forward. It's a really cool feature that Apple offers if you do have AirPods. The next tip is very useful if you have two-factor authentication enabled. So I'm going to go ahead and sign out of my account real quick. So I'm about to log into my Twitter, but I do have two-factor authentication enabled. So after I enter my passcode, I'm still going to have to enter that other code that I get sent as a text message. And with iOS 12, you don't even need to go to the messages application to actually get that code. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's click on log in. You can see it will send a code and look right here, it shows from messages and it shows the code. Just tap that, submit. 
and you're done, you're logged in. That is extremely useful and a feature I really never knew that I needed until iOS 12. And by the way, just a side note, if you don't have two-factor authentication enabled for anything, make sure you do that. In today's day and age, you're really never safe with passwords online. The next little tip is that you can actually type to Siri. So say you're in a loud place or if you're just in a place that's really quiet and you don't wanna talk really loud, you can actually access Siri by typing. So if you go to our settings, go to general, accessibility, go down to Siri, and then you have type to Siri, a toggle for type to Siri right there. So now if we go ahead and invoke Siri, you can see it automatically just has you type something instead of say something. So if I just type hello, you can see it says hello, Brandon back. So like I said, this is super useful if you're either in a loud place where Siri won't be able to understand you, or if you're in a quiet place and you don't want everybody in the building to hear you talking to your phone. And the next trick has to do with Siri shortcuts. So basically I can't say all of these in one video, but there are just so many tricks that you never thought would be possible on an iPhone that you can do here with Siri shortcuts. You can literally download videos from YouTube. You can download pictures from Instagram all in a tap. You can convert burst photos to a GIF, convert videos to a GIF. You could turn things on and off. You can automate everything on your phone with Siri shortcuts. And this is still somehow a very underutilized, underused feature in iOS 12. And if you want to learn how to create Siri shortcuts, I actually have a series on this. So make sure you check that out in the cards right now. It's also down in the description below. It's very informative and shows you basically how to use Siri shortcuts and also what all of the advanced little functions inside of shortcuts mean. I did also make a video on my top 15 Siri shortcuts. So you can watch that. That's also up in the cards and down in the description below. That's a good one to watch if you just want to import all of my shortcuts and if you don't want to build them yourself. But if we go into one of these and click on the share and click on copy iCloud link, this is how you can actually send this to somebody and they can import it into their shortcuts app. So for instance, if I send that inside of a message, you can see it shows up like that. And then I get it like this over here on my other iPhone. If I go ahead and tap on that, it will take me straight to the shortcuts application and you can click on get shortcut to add it to your library. So it's really cool that you're able to do that with shortcuts. And just another very random bonus tip that a lot of people don't know about is that when you actually turn your phone off and turn it back on, you simply only have to tap on the power button instead of hold it to turn it back on. So you can see I have my iPhone 8 Plus here on the right and it is currently off. If I go ahead and tap on the power button just once, you can see it starts booting up just like that. You don't have to sit there and hold it until you see the Apple logo. All that's going to do is wear down your side button or your power button. I still see people out there that sit there and hold the power button all the way until it gets to the lock screen and it just really doesn't make any sense and it's you know a lot harder on you. It's just a lot simpler to just tap on the power button and that's all it takes to boot your phone up. So there you have it guys. Those are some hidden iPhone tips and tricks that you may not have known about that you can use here in iOS 12. I hope you guys did learn something new from this video. If you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. I do also have another part to this series coming. I couldn't share all of the super useful ones in this video because I do have another part to this video. But if you did enjoy this, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that next episode and a lot of other useful iOS tutorials. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.